What's up you guys, Sim here with a new video today and I'm here to do a video on how to prepare, how to interact, how to beat Shadals. And I know this video is something that I'm sure every channel is going to make or every channel is going to touch upon the subject if they haven't already done so. Um, I recently have gotten back into the game and of course, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, you don't know about Shadals, the most like ridiculous, one of the most ridiculous decks to come to the game in a long time. Uh, in about two weeks, it's going to be released. The cards are going to be legal from Duelist Alliance. And that deck is going to absolutely destroy the world, as people have put it. Uh, the deck is little, is just insane. I <laughs> I watched it play on Dev Pro. I watched people test it. It's just so ridiculous that a deck like that exists. It literally can do pretty much anything. It has access to some of the most ridiculous fusions that... I think I've ever been printed. Midrash is an absolute bitch. You can only special summon once. Like, it's just ridiculous. And I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do I beat Shadals? How do I beat Shadals? And, you know, honestly, my answer is them. I, I don't really know what you're talking about because I hadn't really looked into everything. And uh, I talked to a lot of people about it. And what I have before you are a couple options to beat Shadals. Some are obvious. Some are, some are really mediocre compared to the others. When it all boiled down to it, I came down, I believe it, out of these five cards, only I truly believe two of them are really effective. But these were other cards that were brought to my attention. I know there's other cards, uh, but, uh, you know, these are the only ones I can remember off the top of my head. But I'm going to talk about it. So a little thing about the Shadal monsters. <laughs> They're all little flip effects. They all have, like, graveyard effects. They all just do a bunch of crazy shit. They special summon each other. They pop back row. They let you draw cards and their bet well, like their craziest card I actually have it pulled up on my computer here on the side because of course the cards aren't out yet so I can't actually show you the real cards. And if I ever get them like copies of them I'll do another video on it. But their Shadal fusion is pretty ridiculous. Uh, for people who don't know, people who ever played Gem Knight you'll kinda remember because this card is kinda like Ge uh, the Gem Knight fusion. Um you just do it to summon a Shadal fusion from the extra deck on your side of the field uh, or hand as fusion materials. Uh, the thing that's stupid about this card, though, is if your opponent controls a special summon monster from the extra deck, you can also use that those monsters as fusion materials. So that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, you can actually, no, you can use monsters from your main deck as fusion materials. So basically right there that says if you XYZ or Synchro, you're giving them a free fusion. You're letting them go right directly into their deck to use Shadal Fusion and then they're going to get out Midrash or the other one that uh, I did play against a couple of people who actually did have this deck. It was totally random. The other one that I've seen them summon is uh, Nephilim. I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Shadal Nephilim. And that comes from the variant that I've seen where they're running artifacts in them. You know, artifacts are being splashed and everything, but that card's insane too. It's a 2800 beater. Um, if it just, if it battles a special summon monster at the start of the damage step, you destroy it. Like, that's pretty stupid. Um, and if the card is sent to the graveyard, you can just add back a Shadal spell or trap. So basically, you grab back the fusion and you just do it again. Uh, so in a sense, it's kind of like a never-ending loop. That's kind of overwhelming in and of itself because these cards are just so ridiculous. Um, if anyone has a MacBook or plays a YGO Pro, if you guys have seen the AI Shadal, uh, that was like the first place I actually saw the cards. Don't ever take the AIs seriously because they suck and they misplay and they fuck up all the time and it, it's stupid. But it let me actually see the monsters. Uh, the Shadal uh, Falcon, the Shadal uh, Hedgehog, the Dragon, and the Beast. And then they combined it with artifacts, and that's whatever, because artifacts are the hot biz. So that's what uh, they decided to do with that. But it at least let me read some of the cards and see, you know, why is this deck going to be so overwhelming? And, you know, how do we beat it? How do we, if we don't have the financial ability to build the deck, if we don't have the hookups to build the deck, if we don't have the ability to borrow the deck, everyone is saying you have to play that deck. Or there's also Stella Knights. There's, uh, what is it? There's... Burning Abyss, there's other decks, but for right now, people are really focusing on Shadows and saying, you know, this is the deck, you have to play this deck, it's the going to be probably the best best deck. And then you're going to have the other side of the argument where people are going to say that this deck is just overhyped, there's ways to beat it, and, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go on the latter part of that and say, I'm not going to play Shadows. So what if we're not going to play Shadows? How do we beat them? How do we prepare for them? Most decks are going to get stomped by this deck. It's a known fact. I've talked to a lot of good players, and they're just saying a lot of the decks that were relevant last format and this format, they're basically the same format, are going to kind of fall by the wayside because they're just not going to be able to keep up. So how do you make a deck 
uh, you know, how do you design a side deck or a main deck that can beat this deck? So, uh, back to like the main part of the video, the cards that I have before you, cards that can stop Shadals in their tracks. I'm going to put my two favorites to the side because I'll explain why. These are three things that were brought up to my attention uh, by subscribers, by people on Facebook, stuff like that, etc. Uh, the first one is pretty obvious. Consecrated Light. You know, your opponent can't normal summon. What is it? Your opponent uh, cannot normal summon or special summon dark monsters, declare an attack with dark monsters. Bad, though. Card's terrible because they just set the dark monster, flip the effect, and boom. You know, like, that's about it. They can just start setting their Shadals. So this card, I think, is crap. I don't think this card does anything. At first, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe this card is good. But no, they can just set the, the Shadals, which they do anyway, and it's like this card does nothing. So this, in theory, was just bad. Um, at first, I was like, oh, yeah, wait, maybe. And then I read it again. I was like, oh, wait, they can still set cards. So that card immediately got the boot from these cards. Now, the other two cards. Defusion was interesting. Defusion was because... You know, Midrash is a bitch, you defusion it, okay, you get it off the board, but they get to special summon the monsters back if they have them, and the thing with that is that, I mean, they're just going to try and do it again, or they're going to make some other crazy plays, so I don't know how effective defusion really is, to be honest. I A lot of these cards I don't think are that are, are really that effective, I don't know if they're worth side decking. Defusion is cool in theory, the fact that you can just hit their Midrash, hit any other fusion they make but if they have the ability to do it over and over again i mean you better hope that you have the extra defusions and then when you, they bring out the monsters anyway they already have monsters on board and they're just going to keep doing their plays so i don't know how effective defusion will be but it was something brought to my attention to take out mid rash and take out any of the other fusions they make so it is interesting i don't know if it'll uh actually um hold any weight when shadals come out but it's nice in theory to think that an old card like defusion could actually do something uh, the one that actually did come to my attention at first was Royal Command, a really, really old card. This was the reprint of it. Um, this card just basically says negate the effects of all uh, flip effect months of all flip effects. So Shadals are basically all flip effects. So in theory, it was like it's like a floodgate. It's going to stop them from flipping and it's going to stop them from, you know, getting their effects off, getting their pluses, etc. Problem is, though, they have their graveyard effects, and their graveyard effects can easily pop Royal Command. I'm trying to remember which one actually pops Spell and Traps. Uh, bear with me. Uh, it's the Shadal Dragon, I believe, because uh, when you flip it, target one card your opponent controls, return that card to the hand. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one spell or trap on the field, destroy the target. So if they use any of their Shadal monsters before, if they use, um, what was it, that card that they, it's called uh, Facing the Shadows, it's one of their trap cards. You send one Shadal from your deck to the graveyard, you can then change any number of face down defense position Shadal monsters. You control the face up defense position, so they can literally activate this, send Dragon, pop Royal Command, then flip all their monsters up afterwards and kind of just give you the middle finger for trying to even try to floodgate them. So, again... At first, the card seemed like a great option, but will it be, will it be effective? I'm not sure. I would hope that it would possibly see play and possibly be a way to stop them, but I feel with the traps that they have with facing the shadows that it would be very hard to stop um, them from just popping this with dragon, depending on how many they play. But it is a good card just to stop their overall flip effects. Now, the last two cards are a little more obvious, and these are the two cards I felt are probably going to be the most effective against the deck, if you're going to have a fighting chance against the deck. A lot of people are comparing this to Baby Dragon, Dragon Ruler format, that you had to have Floodgate cards, you had to have cards specifically designed to beat the deck, if you were going to win. Uh, the first one is very obvious, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. I personally feel Shadow Imprisoning Mirror is probably the best. Uh, quote-unquote floodgate because not only will it prevent their on-field effects it will also prevent their graveyard effects that's the main thing you're trying to do that is the deck in its entirety they're going to flip on the field they're going to activate in the graveyard shadow imprisoning mirror is going to take care of that a lot of people are going to be siding three the formats to where you side three shadow imprisoning mirrors it's back when insectors were around it was a thing when dark world started to become a thing people cited shadow mirrors shadow mirrors gonna be cited again if you're not playing shadows it's one of the best outs. I feel it's probably is the most effective out in a trap card in a in a quote unquote floodgate because it like light mirror, it's going to shut down all their main effects. So I hope that, you know, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror is the answer for people that who are not playing the deck. I feel that it'll have one of the best answers and that outside of Typhoon, outside of um I'm trying to see if there's any other cards. I know that the Facing the Shadows does that. And then there's their other card that they have, um, Shadow Roots, that's the one that lets them special summon, um, but it doesn't actually destroy the Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, so I think that would probably be one of the best cards, but they are running three of that uh, 
facing the shadows. So you just really got to hope you get you open with shadow mirror against them if you're going first or that they don't get enough setup going first if you go second. So I truly believe shadow imprisoning mirror will probably be one of the best outs against that deck. Um, it's pretty obvious. It's really, you know, standard, but when it comes to decks that are solely, you know, one attribute and everything is in the graveyard or the field, which is the majority of the monsters, it's probably one of the best cards to beat them. And then last but not least, now we're going to cross out. <laughs> this one just is a no-brainer. They're all flip effects. Cross them out. Get the majority of them banished. You know, get their monsters out of the deck. Get them banished. You know, have a fighting chance because the less monsters they have, the less ability they have to go into their uh, their fusions and to lock you down with Midrash and other cards. So I truly believe at the end of the day, these two cards will probably be the most effective. These are the only ones I know. Uh, I want to leave the uh, comments below to other discussion cards, other cards that I forgot. I know there's plenty. Um, these were just the cards I actually physically had on me. I didn't want to have to do a DN screenshot or any of that crap. I actually wanted to have the actual cards in front of me because right now I could say I'm not going to play Shadals. That could all change. It, apparently the deck is not going to be, it's going to, uh, I saw Cordero's post that it's going to be kind of like baby dragons that they're making them kind of rares and stuff like very easy to get. Of course, Midrash is going to be a secret, I believe, or it's going to be a very high rarity. So it is probably going to be the most expensive in the car, uh, most expensive card. And that's completely understandable. It being like the, like just total lockdown of the deck. I mean, when you can only special summon once, I mean, come on. I mean, you special summon like one dragon ruler. If you're playing dragon rulers, they're going to stop it. They have ways to stop it. And it's just, like um you can only do it once per turn so it's you know you get one special summon and then after that well you better just hope it works but uh, i hope you guys enjoyed today's video uh i don't i didn't give a super amount of information i just talked about some of the cards um that will change of course as the cards become legal in two weeks uh if i get my hands on some of the cards we'll have a little more in discussions in this i guess this will be like a part one to countering shadals and what to expect from them the deck's gonna be insane there's no way to say it. the deck's gonna be insane it's uh people are saying it's gonna be tier zero i don't know if, the, if that's the right term uh, people are arguing no it's about a 0.5 or a one if that tier one whatever tiers matter to some people but it's going to be one of the best decks so i truly believe that uh, these two cards, out of all the ones I've mentioned, are going to be the most effective. I wanted to include the other ones just to, for people who immediately, like I did, thought about some obvious cards and then realized in the long run the cards don't do anything. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. In the comments below, just give me your thoughts on the deck. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to rage quit because the deck is just insane, but it's going to happen. And, um, you know, what is your way to counter the deck? If it's through another deck, you know, comment below, give a reason why. If you have a discussion, leave it below, link it to me, it'll be a video response, etc. Let me know what you guys think about Shadals, how you're going to beat them, and how you're going to prepare for them in the upcoming uh, weeks when the deck becomes legal. That's all I got to say, guys. Thumbs it up, and thank you for watching.